Hello, humans. I am Escherichia coli, but you can call me E. coli. I'm a bacteria and a quite famous one at that. I've seen this trend called Draw My Life on YouTube, and I find it very intriguing. So much so that I've threatened, I mean employed, five bright microbiology students to draw my life, since it is quite difficult to hold a marker with flagella. I'm not merely a member of the family of Enterobacteriaceae, I'm special. My culture and I possess the gene for extended spectrum beta lactamase, or ESBL which is just a fancy word for an enzyme that breaks down beta-lactam antibiotics like penicillin. These antibiotics are responsible for the demise of millions of my ancestors by inhibiting the synthesis of the peptidoglycan layer of their cell walls. Growing cells burst without the support of cell walls. You humans thought you were so clever when you discovered your precious penicillin. But now, thanks to some evolutionary pressures and a few cheeky mutations, my fellow bacteria and I are now resistant to the beta-lactam antibiotics that threaten the growth of our culture. The primary military tactic of ESBL is to target the amides and ester bonds of beta-lactam antibiotics and destroying them through hydrolysis. Sometimes our ESBLs change the functional groups of these antibiotics. Adenyl, phosphoryl, or acetyl groups are added to the periphery of the antibiotic molecule. The chemical substitution inactivates our enemies and renders them useless. Another strategy used by our ESBLs is to modify the antibiotic target site so the antibiotics would not be able to properly bind to our cell wall. Because of the effectiveness of ESBLs, we are resistant to all forms of penicillin, third-generation cephalosporins, and astreonam. However, we are not resistant to cefamycins and carbapenems. Hey, wait a minute. That's not supposed to be in the script. These humans can't know what we're weak against. Chill, guys. Let's just have a popsicle. Yay. Yay. Oops. If you want to witness the power of ESBLs in action, check out these hip spots. Males, people who have been recently hospitalized, folks older than 65, residents in a long-term care facility, and patients with morbid conditions. We especially like to hang out in patients taking cephalosporins, so look for anyone with any kind of infection, pneumonia, or meningitis. You should also travel to high-risk areas if you want to be infected, I mean, friends with us. Most patients that tested positive for ESBL-producing bacteria were mainly found in these regions of the world. We have thrived in countries in Asia, as well as Latin America, while our population in Europe still has room to grow. This only accounts for patients with appendicitis who have recently been hospitalized. I heard that you humans are doing all kinds of things to try to combat the spread of our kind. Genetic and phylogenetic research, risk factor and intervention studies, and development of blood screening tests. All your effects against us are futile. We will achieve world domination! Be quiet. Hi fellow humans over there. Sorry to cut E. coli off, but there are effective ways to prevent the spread of ESBL producing bacteria. Carbapenems are still the first choice of treatment for serious infections with ESBL producing E. coli and K. pneumoniae. Some essential infection control practices are avoiding unnecessary use of invasive devices such as catheters or IV lines, disinfecting contaminated medical devices, and shortening hospitalizations. Governments should survey the prevalence of ESBL-producing bacteria. Proper administration of antibiotics is also crucial in treating infection. More studies need to be done on clinical efficacy and treatment of these fast-evolving bacteria so that we may have the upper hand as antimicrobial resistance continues to be a growing problem. And of course, frequent hand washing by hospital personnel should be done.